Today I want to talk about Neville Gallimore and how the hype train around him is only going to get bigger, longer, faster, and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we need to talk about Bruce Feldman's freak list. And at number two on that list and making a second straight appearance on that list is one Neville Gallimore. Neville Gallimore. Dude was running... 4'7 last year at 335 pounds, and the only thing that seems to have changed about what Neville Gallimore can do is drop 30 pounds, which most folks will tell you, whether you're big or small, is not an easy task. Weight loss is its own sort of monster, and folks that can do it, and do it even in the fashion that Neville Gallimore has done it, 30 pounds of 330, that's really big. That's huge. That's massive. I mean, that's a commitment to diet as well as exercise. And most people will tell you it's the diet that is the hardest thing to get your arms around. And Neville Gallimore is going to be a handful next year because at 305 pounds, your man is running 4.76 seconds in the 40-yard dash. Now, let's unpack that. Quentin Williams, who was the best defensive lineman in the draft last year and who has the highest matting rating among rookies this year ran 483 at about 303. So if Neville Gallimore can make that speed translate into the kind of production that Quinn and Williams had a year ago, we could be talking about Neville Gallimore as a first round pick. Now caveat there. I'm first to tell you Neville Gallimore is going to be an old dude going in the NFL draft as a red shirt senior. And yes, the dude was good last year when he played. He had 50 tackles, like five and a half tackles for loss and three sacks, but he was also running in a different scheme. He's running a scheme that doesn't necessarily suit hit what he does well or what anybody else on that defense does well. Look, the dude was running two gap. He's running the nose. This year, he's running one gap, which means he gets to do what he does best, which is split the offensive line and try to go kill quarterbacks, get in the backfield, create havoc there. So if he's faster than Quentin Williams is, yeah, that should... Just translate, no matter who you're doing or what you're doing or why you're playing, who you're playing with. At 305 pounds, you're on a 4, 7, 40, you got to go make some noise, especially in this Big 12 where, yes, people are pass happy in the offense, but we also know that it ain't like playing against SEC offenses where you don't have that many opportunities to go sack a quarterback because most of those folks run a pro-style kind of offense. Neville Gallimore should be able to do something about that. But also, he's strong. Like, Neville Gallimore squats your house. He squats 800 plus pounds at 300 pounds. Two and a half times your body weight, that's going to get it done, okay? Most people, myself included, will tell you that's where I would want my athletes to be if they played football. I'd want them to be able to squat two and a half times their body weight, and I want them to be able to bench one and a half times their body weight. And, oh yeah, Neville Gallimore is putting up 500 pounds on the bench press. Now, I know that... The bench is not necessarily the greatest indicator of what you can do with football, right? We're going to look at hand clings, power clings. We're going to even look to a degree at what you can do with the deadlift. But even that is, eh, don't really want my kids deadlifting that much if I'm a strength coach. But his speed, his power, his agility, it should all be there. And we're going to look at Neville Gallimore to be a leader on this defense, as the coaches would say. Number one, he's coming to Big 12 Media Days. And he and Kenneth Murray Jr. are the only two guys coming to Big 12 Media Days, which means that you expect those guys to be competing for starting positions and maybe to even be penciled in as starters come preseason camp. Now, anything can happen in preseason camp and did. Like last year, everybody thought Caleb Kelly was going to be the will guy. And it ended up Curtis Bolton beat him out for that job. And Curtis Bolton, for many people, was the best defensive player on the that team last year in 2018. This year, you want that guy to be Neville Gallimore, but what's behind him? That is the bigger question to me. Because, yes, Neville Gallimore could be good. Neville Gallimore could be great. Ronnie Perkins could be good and great. Kenneth Mann could be good and great. But what's Marcus Hicks going to do? What's Marcus Stripling going to do? Joseph Wette, David Uguebu, Troy James. These are all guys that we really want to see go out there and be difference makers 
on a defense that, if it was even middling to good, probably wins back-to-back national championships. And we all know that that's going to be the dominant storyline for Oklahoma. And as many people want to continue to say, enough with the offensive recruiting in the 2020 class. Show me where the defensive tackles are. Number one, Perry on Winfrey smiling at you going, I'm here, dog. Number two, you have players on this defense that were highly recruited and highly ranked. Both are true. Neville Gallimore is one of those guys. You need Neville Gallimore to show up in a big way in his last year as a Sooner, and you need Marcus Hicks, Mark Stripling, Troy James, and others to come on with quickness if Oklahoma's defense is going to be good. All right, that is it for me. Deuces.